Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is about flying cross country in my ASW-20B. The glider first flew in 1977, 42 years ago, and it's a glider that's loved by all that fly it. The manufacturer Schleicher is still in business, so it's a good thing you can always get parts for your glider. It has a wingspan of about 45 feet and the gross weight is a little over a thousand pounds and I cruise typically between 60 and about 100 miles per hour. The 20B model has flaperons and that's a very interesting configuration that you can use to fly at various speeds. It has flaps that can be deployed down to 55 degrees. The pilot can make exceptional steep approaches at slow speeds permitting a very short landing when required. The glide ratio is about 40 to 1 and stall speed is about 30, 38. And here's the flight as shown on OLC. The flight started at TSA at the top center. Then I headed to the right or east over to Ennis. From Ennis, I went down to Hillsboro. From Hillsboro up to Cleburne and back to TSA. The total flight distance was about 124 miles and it had an average speed of 43 miles an hour or over the course. Total flight time was about 2.5 hours. Looking at the graph below, my flight was between 4,500 and 6,000 feet nearly the entire way. All right, let's take a look at this next image. Most of my followers already know what this is all about. I provide you real flight information in real time. So starting at the bottom left hand corner, that is ground speed, not air speed, so don't get that confused. A GPS can only calculate ground speed. At the top is the actual flight to scale. You'll see the little red dot in the triangle. That's the actual glider. Above is the flight time. Center top is a compass heading. Right hand side is your rate of climb indicator as measured in feet per minute. And the bottom right is your altimeter. All right, let's prepare for takeoff. There's a lot going on on the takeoff and your hands are busy. You've got to stay focused. No distractions. You've got to keep your eye on that tow plane at all times. The glider has a CG hookup and it can make it very sensitive in pitch. You've got to be very careful here. You can easily pull up enough to force the tow plane's nose down and it has happened. It was an exceptional day to fly and we had cumulus almost all the way around the entire flight. I'm using an OD2 flight computer and I also have a Nano 3 as a backup. There's the release. We're going to climb and pull up so we can separate as fast as possible from the tow plane. If possible you want to release in a thermal and come back around and find it. And that's what I did here. So we're starting to circle around and gaining altitude as we proceed higher. I guess a lot of you glider pilots out there knew that I was flying the PW a lot in my videos. So moving up to an ASW-20 was a real treat. It's like driving from a Volkswagen to a Cadillac. <laughs> so flying the PW-5, I would use about four miles per thousand feet. And the ASW-20, I can use seven or eight miles per thousand feet of altitude lost. Pretty amazing, isn't it? So at this point I started heading east to Ennis, which is about uh, 20 miles. At this point I got into a, a nice thermal and I'm going to ride that puppy up. Then we'll start cruising uh, again toward Ennis. So as I talked about before, the glider has flapper on. So when I get into a thermal, I can pull, pull the lever back on my left hand there and use what's called thermaling flap as I circle into it. As far as speed around the course, I flew conservative around 60 knots or 72 miles an hour, best L over D, but in the very near future, I'm going to start flying a lot faster. On a good day, I should be able to fly between 80 and 100 miles an hour between thermals. When I started this cross country, I didn't actually have a flight plan sorted out. I just got up there, said, okay, looking good. Look at those clouds to the, to the east. That's where I'm headed, and that's where Ennis is located. 
So when we have cumulus clouds, they really can tell us where the lift could be. So if you notice on that triangle, the red dot is moving closer to Ennis. If you'll notice on the triangle, we don't fly in an exact straight line. We follow the cumulus clouds from one cloud to the other, you know, generally in the direction we're going. But we just don't fly straight ahead because we want to use those clouds and use the lift under them to, to either porpoise, so we slow down in lift, speed up in sink, and speed up any faster in heavy sink. So I've been experimenting with the flap adjustments, uh, going negative. What does negative aileron do? What is that? How can that help you? Well, what it does, it allows you to fly faster because there's less lift on the wingtips. So with negative one, flap setting or aileron setting, you can easily fly at 80 knots or about 92 miles an hour cruise speed. With ailerons in negative two position, you can easily cruise at 100 to 125 miles an hour, very easily. Now at this time, I found a really nice thermal here working my way up, and I'm over the town of Ennis at this time. Well, let's just watch the video as I climb on out. Had a real nice climb out over 6,000 feet. Now we'll start heading to Hillsboro, which is about 30 miles from here. I fly at Texas Soaring Association, which is in Midiothian, Texas. We have about 200 members, and there's so many people there that have so much knowledge that have helped me prepare for this glider. So if you're a novice, and can find a glider club to join. I highly recommend that that way to go. I spent a few hours in a dual discus to prepare for flying the ASW 20 and people might think or at least I thought initially why would I what is a dual discus have anything to do with a ASW 20? Well speed management is probably one of the big factors. The dual discus and the ASW-20 have very similar glide ratios, very similar performance. So one of the things I did is have to learn to manage your energy a lot more efficiently, especially on landing. So at this point, I'm about three quarters of the way to Hillsboro. If you'll notice that little red triangle, you'll see I'm getting closer and I'm just working this nice thermal at this time. So at this time I've gained sufficient altitude and I'm going to go ahead and head on down to Hillsboro. And I keep my old trusty sectional map available if I need it. If the OD goes out, I still have a backup to the Nano 3 and if that doesn't work, I still have a map to use. <laughs> Amazing what they can do with technology, isn't it? So 
So on the yellow triangle, you can see I've made it down to Hillsboro. From this point, I'm going to head north, northwest over to Cleburne. And that's about 25 miles. If you look down at the ground there you can see in this area we've got a million places to land out at and you even have Hillsboro has an airport there too so if you land there you can call up TSA say help me help me help me come get me please and they'll come get a tow plane pick you up tow you back Another real nice thermal just took me back up to 6,000, over 6,000. And we'll set it up for cruise going to Cleburne. And there is an airport too that you can land out at. So, real nice, real nice cross country flight. Really enjoyed this one. You'll notice the triangle about, about halfway to Cleburne at this time. Look at the altitude too. Just what a wonderful day. Never never got low to get scared about anything. That doesn't happen every day, <laughs> I'll tell you. All right, at this time we're just going to set it up for cruise. I'm going to put it on cruise control. Autopilot. I wish I had one, but I really don't. And we're going to we're just about to Cleburne. You'll notice the flight time now is 135 minutes, which is about two and a quarter hours. At this time, I'm over Cleburne Airport and heading, heading back east to TSA. And you'll notice out there, there's not as many or abundant cumulus clouds as there have been for most of the entire flight. And I'm thinking, hmm, am I going to be able to make, the, make it back to TSA? But even if I don't, I've got a couple of grass strips I can land along the way.
So at this time I'm working this final thermal and I'm going to maximize as much as I can get out of it and then we'll start final glide and what that means is I'll be high enough to make it back to TSA hopefully. My flight computer indicates that I'll make it back at about 1500 feet above the ground but yet I'm still 20, 20 miles out or so. So you know I'm sitting there looking and thinking hmm let's see So I've set it up on final glide and and again I'm not gonna try to fly a lot faster. I'm just doing basically best L over D, which is around 60 to 65 knots. I'm just playing it conservative. I'll get better and faster as I get more experience. And hopefully the we're in August, which is our peak season, and then it's kind of downhill from there for long cross country flights, but hopefully I'll be able to fly a lot faster. Alright, this time just kind of working my way down. Still have about 15 more miles to go. I do have those two land out areas. One is a asphalt runway and another one has a grass grip over at Lupskin. But I've got sufficient altitude or height energy to make it back to TSA. But it was pretty close and you'll see that here when we get to the landing phase coming up. At this point, I've got TSA in sight. Still looking at the OD computer, still saying I can make it with at least 1,500 feet above the ground, which is our pattern altitude, by the way. So as I proceed to TSA, I'm thinking of some contingencies. What if I hit some sink or something and I, maybe it's going to be a real tight situation getting to TSA. I need some outs. What, what, what else can I do? Well, there's a airport to the right. You can't see it here, but it has a cement runway. That, that could be one out for me. Another possible out would be instead of flying over the airport to enter a pattern for a left downwind I might do a right hand pattern if I have low energy but it just turned out perfect I, I don't normally nail it on final glide but this one I, I just happen to do it just right doesn't happen every day for me at least not yet anyway takes a lot of experience I've got an issue with my radio so I can hear on the onboard radio, not a problem, but I can't transmit. So I, I purchased a, a handheld so I could at least communicate with other, other flyers. And I'll get that fixed when, I'm, when I get an annual done on it. I'm just not going to do it right now, but that's the way it turned out. TSA traffic, uh, Echo 405 Bravos, uh, over the top center of the field, entering a left down one for runway 18. I do have sufficient altitude to make a normal pattern 
and I just put the landing gear down don't want to forget that thank you very much the safest place to enter the pattern is top center of the field you'll notice now I've uh, brought it back into landing flap mode and I also heard that there was another uh, ASK 21 and on the downwind so I've, I've got that to deal with so what I decided to do after I see him out there a little further out I made a tight pattern and decided to land on the grass and allow the 21 to use the asphalt runway just those are things you have to think about when I say about landing flap I'm really saying thermaling flap position I haven't made any landings with a full flap setting which is 55 degrees I have experimented way up high and it's amazing you got to keep the nose down at 45 degrees just to maintain 60 knots anyway here comes the landing approach Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to look up all my other flying videos from radio control, ultralights, hang gliders, and a lot more. So you guys have a great day, and we'll see you in the air next time. Bye-bye.